So friends, last time I talked about uh, the ugly heroes of uh, electricity and magnetism like uh, Benjamin Franklin starting from that time Gilbert then Ohm and Ampere and Faraday and Flemings and all those big uh, names which are there overstayed they collected so much of information about the electricity and magnetism and interrelation between uh, between them that uh, finally Maxwell collected all that information and tried to formulate a theory. Now that finally resulted in what we call the Maxwell's equations or uh, the theory of electromagnetism as formulated by Maxwell. But interestingly, the whole uh, derivation of uh, those equations in the Maxwell's paper was based on a mechanical model. So he assumes that whatever is the medium, dielectric or whatever, or ether, that has uh, mechanical properties like particles which are there, elastic forces are there, elasticity is there, electrical elasticity and all those kinds of things uh, he, he takes, he models like that. And then just like a mechanical wave uh, goes through a material by disturbing the particles and then the particles disturbing the next neighbors and so on. So with that kind of model, based on that kind of uh, model, Maxwell formulated all those stories, all those equations and uh, I admit that uh, when I try to read the two very classic papers in which these equations are derived, I understood very little of it. Okay, and there are so many equations and so, right, but, but from that it does result that uh, electromagnetic waves should exist, okay, they should exist if these equations are correct and if these equations are coming from the observations in the laboratories on currents and magnetic fields and uh, induced EMF, uh, inductance and so on, if these equations describe those uh, experimental observations correctly and if these descriptions are are the main uh, forces which drives all those uh, experiments then there should also be electromagnetic waves which can travel uh, in some medium or uh, free space and so on so those things came from maxwell's equations but then the Maxwell's equations we did not get the acceptability because of uh, the, the background modeling or whatever. And then comes the main character of our story on photoelectric effect that is this uh, Heinrich Hertz who was a brilliant uh, physicist, brilliant physicist, very short lived, 36 years of age total he lived on this planet but uh, in that short period he has really done wonders and his mathematics and his, uh, uh, his theoretical understanding and, and capability, theoretical capabilities were enormous and he re-derived Maxwell's equations from uh, more fundamental principles, first principles and gave them the symmetric form that we use today. The Maxwell's equations in the form that we use today uh, are basically given by Hertz and with uh, Heaviside and, and, and others. So that was the kind and then it got acceptability also, right? But then uh, to get that acceptability, not only that he re-derived those things in a much more convincing fashion, but the one for which he is very famous among everyone is that he, he, he set his operators and experiments, designed experiments to test whether this electromagnetic wave can be produced in the laboratory. 
If the theory says, if the Maxwell's equation says that they should exist, then the, one should be able to produce them in the laboratory. Oscillating, oscillating uh, charges will produce uh, such kind of electromagnetic waves. That was the that was the result from Maxwell's equations, and her started working on it. All right. And what kind of operators he thought, conceived, designed and then uh, did experiment on that. A very short description, textbook descriptions, now it's all class 12 stuff. I will slightly elaborate uh, from what I have read uh, from the more uh, elaborate literature, uh, the kind of operators that he has used, the kind of uh, uh, procedure that he has taken to produce those electromagnetic waves in the laboratory. So, essentially he takes uh, an LCR circuit. <laughs> okay? If you don't know what LCR circuit is, don't worry, <laughs> the story will still uh, be understandable. So, essentially you have uh, the LCR circuit is uh, inductor and then capacitor and then resistance and a source. This is the uh, standard LCR circuit that we study in class uh, 12. We do experiments in the labs also. In BSC normally we do experiments on, on this kind of things. So in the Hertz operators also it was an LCR. So um, uh, essentially it was some kind of uh, coil, this kind of coil let us say. But the source here, source here is uh, from a transfer. Okay, so this forms uh, one end, and then you have another end, and this is the transformer. And here you have a normal, say, 20 volt and uh, 50 hertz, like that. Normal, whatever power supply you have. But then uh, this is step up thing, and it gives here. Uh, voltage which is uh, quite high, which is let us say some kilovolts, uh, 6, uh, 10, 20, 30 kilovolts, so kilovolts, several kilovolts, minimum say 5, 6 kilovolts, <laughs> okay. And then this is the source, this is that EMF that we are giving to the circuit, and then we have this uh, capacitor here, and then the, the circuit is not complete. That's the basic part. Circuit is not complete. So there is a gap in the circuit. And here we have very small spheres, small spheres separated by a small distance. So the circuit is broken. Okay. But since the high voltage is there, the capacitor is there, there will be a high voltage across this gap. And if you have high voltage across a gap where air is there, that air can get ionized because of that high voltage across the gap. The high voltage in a small gap means large electric field. And that large electric field can knock out electrons from the air molecules. And then the air may become conducting because now you have free electrons. If the electric field which is there in this gap and air is there, so that electric field can exert forces on the electrons of those uh, air molecules and if the forces are strong enough, then those electrons can come out. And if they come out, then you have free electrons which can move and ions and then this becomes conducting. And it's like as if you have completed the circuit. The moment you complete the circuit, all that LCR thing, the resistance is already there in the circuit. So all that LCR oscillations will start into it. And if LCR uh, starts with this, and if you have L, you have C, then uh, that omega equal to square root 1 by LC, or frequency is omega by 2 pi. So it is like this. With this frequency, you will have oscillations, okay? And uh, that should produce electromagnetic wave. 
so that was his uh, kind of idea and uh, so waves are generated from this is the circuit right waves are generated from the circuit and but the spark will not be continuous once the spark is there when the conducting path is there once again that uh, charge accumulation will not be there because now the charge has a path to flow and therefore the voltage will decrease and the spark will stop and once the spark is stopped once again the same story says the uh, we are supplying the voltage once again uh, this discharge will build up here once again there will be a large potential difference across this once again there will be a spark so intermittently intermittently electromagnetic waves are generated from the circuit of frequency mean frequency at least close to this fine so it is generation but unless you detect it unless you see that yes it is there unless you have some mechanism to to receive it and show it the task is not complete so there is a receiver and since it can move electromagnetic wave means once it is generated it should move in air or whatever medium is there and therefore what this hertz heinrich hertz does is put another circuit here and this circuit was just a, say a loop a copper loop and with some kind of a metallic uh, uh this uh, material here there be two spheres or one pointed and one sphere with a small gap and so on and if the wave is generated and if this wave is reaches here and this wave creates oscillation here okay this wave creates emf here the wave creates tries to create currents in this but once again it is it is broken and the same mechanism the same mechanism if you have some potential difference uh, which is generated here because of this em wave then that potential difference may lead to a spark here so if you have a spark here if you have a spark here if you have a spark here that means the wave has reached here that the detection of uh, electromagnetic wave so you have you generate it and you detect it now in in actual experiment in the real experiment this like okay this was this gap is adjustable it is all is very schematic design i am writing here uh, it's all uh, some kind of screw micrometer screw on which these things are fitted and by rotating that screw this gap can be adjusted okay so if you reduce the gap the chances of sparks will be there and uh, suppose yes at this gap suppose i have a spark then increase this gap increase this gap right increase this gap and see whether whether you you still have a spark here if you still have a spark here increase the gap further and see if you have a spark here so the maximum gap that you can create and still there is a spark how much gap how much maximum gap you can create to get those spark to have those sparks that gives the idea of strength of the wave which is reaching here if this wave is weak if the intensity of this wave is low then uh, at this much of gap there is no spark but if i reduce and make this much of gap possibly yes so this length spark length that is related to intensity of the wave received so physics design nobody nobody to, he, he did not read it in some book or some journal or some paper a physicist design them their own method and then the fabricate apparatus 
and then do the experiment and get the results. So this was the kind of setup. Now the data, the, the literature says that these spark lengths, these spark lengths were of the order of 1 by 100 of a millimeter. Millimeter, remember. 1 millimeter divided by 100. That was the kind of distances. That's the, that's, that's the scale. A double of that, 3 times of that, 5 times of that and so on. But uh, it is of that kind. 1 by 100 of a millimeter or a small multiple of that. That was the length. And for how much time? For how much time? Duration. Duration of a spark. That was say around a micro microsecond, 10 power minus 6 seconds. So <laughs> if there is a spark for a microsecond and the length of spark is 1 by 100 millimeter, how difficult it will be to see that there is a spark. All right. So the whole thing was done, whole experiment was done in some dark uh, room and eyes are to be adapted to see in that darkness and then they could observe such kind of sparks and do the experiments. Right. So this kind of experiment, so he has done to establish that yes, Yes, Maxwell's equations predict that there should be electromagnetic waves when you have oscillating uh, fields, electric and magnetic fields. And if you do this kind of, uh, you supply AC and then you oscillate charges in the circuit, they indeed produce electromagnetic wave. Otherwise, with uh, a separation of uh, say 30-40 feet or 10 meters, how can this know that something is, is going here? So that is known as uh, the Hertz experiment to generate and detect uh, electromagnetic waves and, and the formulation of Maxwell's equation by Hertz in a very neat and clean way, convincing way, in a very symmetric way and then uh, doing the experiment and showing that yes, there are electro magnetic waves one can generate in the lab and detect that uh, finally establishes that yes yes the Maxwell theory is is right but where is photoelectric wave why I am talking all these things in the story of photoelectric effect that is because to make this these sparks visible when he makes this portion darkened by putting some case or, or, or some material around to block the normal light so that this faint spark can be seen then he observes something something else okay that uh, generation of wave was is there uh, the uh, this uh, detection of wave is there but on top of that, he observes something else when he is trying to put those uh, enclosures to make it more dark. And that is uh, where he finds that, okay, from the spark, from the light, from this light, okay, there are two things. One is that uh, the spark is there, so the light is generated and the light is dark. Another is because of the spark, the path become conducting and therefore it is an oscillating circuit and from that oscillating circuit, EM wave is generated. Light is light. Frequency 10 power 15 hertz and so on. Okay, visible light. And uh, this frequency of EM wave, the main EM wave, the target EM wave is decided by uh, that uh, square root of uh, 1 by inductance into capacitance and so on. That, that could be in radio wave region or, or microwave region. So they are, these are two different things. So the light which is generated from here, that has some, that light falls on this, these spheres or these electrodes or these, these metal balls. And that is affecting the spark light. 
this light which falls here is affecting the spark length and he by experimentation he sees that okay if my my shield if my shield is absorbing ultraviolet portion of this light that causes the spark lengths to decrease okay you know ultraviolet the visible light has wavelength 400 nanometer to 700 or 750 nanometers of that kind the portion of the light or radiation which is having wavelengths lower than 400 lower than violet they are known as ultraviolet the frequency is higher wavelength is lower so that is known as ultraviolet 300 nanometer 200 nanometer 250 nanometers those will be ultraviolet so whatever ultraviolet is coming from the spark if that is stopped absorbed then the spark length is reduced you have to shorten the gap to see the spark but uh, if ultraviolet is allowed if that whole whole light is allowed especially the uv part is allowed then the spark length increases so that was actually the photoelectric effect and there he sees that the, the, this light is also the especially the ultraviolet component of light is also affecting the spark length and why that is there and um, how that is related to photoelectric effect we will talk of that experiment but this was the first authentic documented uh, observations that I have uh, seen and which is popularly known there may be many other scientists who might have seen this photoelectric effect kind of thing earlier but at least I do not know about that so how he pursued this and how other people pursued that photoelectric effect thing that will be our next episode of the story